Welcome to class. If you sit back in your chair, feet on the floor, and just bring the backs of the hands onto your, onto your thighs, onto your lap. And we're gonna close the eyes. And let's lengthen through that spine so we feel as though we're helping our posture straight away. Let's tune into our breath. So just watch and feel what the breath's doing for you today. So where the breath is moving. The flow of your breath. And the speed of your breath. This gives us an indicator of where we're at when we start our session. So today we're going to do a short chant using our fingers. And as we move the thumbs across each finger, we'll make a, we'll make a sound that corresponds to the energy in that finger. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll get us started off and then we can go at our own speed if we want, or you can stay with me and we sort of do it together. It's entirely up to you. To finish, I'll just use my singing bowl so that I'll bring us all to stillness at the same kind of time. You don't have to have any kind of singing sound. I certainly can't sing. But vibration and sound is really important for our bodies. It really can bring some big energy shifts just by using sound. And also when you make the sounds with your tongue, there's different energy areas in your mouth and the tongue <clears throat> will also stimulate them. So it works deeper than we often think. Okay, so I'll just do a couple of rounds just to introduce it. Then I'll stop and then we'll all start together. So we take a breath in and then on the out breath is when we make the sound and the movement. So it's satanama. Take a breath in and then satanama. So your out breath is the sound and the movement and you just move the thumb across each pad of fingers on the out breath. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll start together and then if you want to go on with your own breath, then please do. So take a breath in first and we'll start. Satanama. 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 
Sata Nama. So resting the hands, reaching back into your body and see if there's any sensations at all traveling through the body after that short charm. Please feel free to do this longer at home. You can always stop the video or play it again. Day that's going to replace our wake up. Because that's again a wonderful way to get the energies moving around the body. Mm -hmm. so opening the eyes and moving forward in your seat. So you've got to support yourself with your with your own muscles. We're going to dangle the arms and we're going to come into our next stretch. So we're going to take the right hand and gently hold onto the chair. And then we're gonna slide down in the opposite direction. Take the arm over the head over and just hang. Feel a soft through this left side as you can. Just feeling the weight of the head opening up that neck. Come up on an in-breath, bring your head up last. And once your head's come back to centre, just drop your chin to the chest. Bring the head back up. Take the left hand, hold on, and then over we go, sliding down the other side. Just feel as though you're sliding. Only hold that chair as much as it just takes to stop it. Dropping you off, basically. Just relaxing that right side. Stretching out through the neck. All right, let's come back up. In breath, head last. Drop the chin to the chest. Keep the arms dangling. that stretch in the back of the neck. Now very slowly bring the head back up and take it to your left. So you're going around to your left. Take the eyes round, look behind. Still working through the neck. But the more you stretch the eye muscles, the more the neck will release. Keep looking round. Bring the head back to center and then you can go to the other side. So straight round horizontally to the right. Look behind again. Bring that head back. Now we're gonna take the chin upwards. So don't just drop the head back. Feel as though you're stretching out through the front of your neck. So the back of the neck doesn't crunch in on itself, okay? So there's a real stretch through the front of the neck. And that means you won't sort of squeeze too much into the back of the neck. If it doesn't feel right for you, either don't go up at all or go up a little less. Then take your eyes and look into your forehead. So the eye muscles are getting another stretch. Now bring your head slowly back to center. Keep your head here and then take your eyes and look down towards the left side, down towards the left. Really get the eye muscles sort of working. Bring your eyes back to center. You can give them a bit of a blink if you fancy. And then take the eyes down towards your right. 
just towards the floor on your right. And bring the eyes back and give them a flick. Lovely. All right, let's start working through these arms. We'll do our picking off fruit, shall we? So bring your left hand into the lap. Right hand is going to stretch up. Grab your fruit. Really bring your hand into a fist. Work the biceps by bringing the elbow down into your ribs. And then into your basket on the floor. Flick your fingers as you release that piece of fruit. Come back up. It's all a good stretch. As high as you can go. Grab into a fist. Down you come. And then release with a flick of the fingers. Again, working into the energy that moves through these hands. Okay. We always want more energy going through the body. Right, let's come up and we'll go out to the side. So reach out, grab a hold, draw it back in, and then release. So my fruit picking this morning was raspberries. I've got some rogue raspberry canes that have come through from the little orchard next door. And they're red, but they're also, I've got yellow ones. And they are sweet as lovely as anything. They're absolutely gorgeous. Last one. <clears throat> so I picked my own breakfast this morning. That doesn't happen very often. Okay, let's go to the other side. And they're not even my raspberries, they've just come through from next door, which I thought was quite extraordinary. But I'll take that. <laughs> All right, and flick the fingers. Okay. Fresh is best, hey? There we go. And one more. Big stretch. Opening right through that side of the body, just giving us more space to breathe. Lovely. And then we'll come over to the side. Nice big stretch. When you're ready, grab, draw in, use that bicep. And that's it. And then down we come. And there we go again. Stretch it to the side as far as you can get. And then there. Last one, I think. There we go. Grab it in. And then let it go. Marvellous. Okay, we're going to come into a twist for the spine. So we're going to have the arms in our cactus. If the shoulders don't like it, you know, bring it down. You don't have to go as high. Okay, so with a lovely long spine, we're going to twist from the waist. So we're going to in-breath in one direction and out-breath in the other. So you may well not be going to keep going at the same speed as me because our breath is different. And sometimes I can't even go in my breath because I'm talking. Okay. Feel as though you're giving the spine a lovely twist. Uh, finish the round you're on, and then we'll do one more. Come back to centre and let those arms drop down. Super. And then have a wiggle through the shoulders if you feel they're a little bit stiff. Whatever you need to do. Okay. So we're going to bring the hands and just hold them as low as you can on your chair. Because what I want to do is get stretched through the front here. Okay. So we're literally going to take the chest upwards. And that should naturally bring the shoulder blades together at the back and open through this space. Okay. So just gently hold the chair, lift the chest up, 
and you'll naturally feel the shoulders will just open themselves up. Don't drop the head back. The head just naturally moves with the spine, that's all. You might feel a little bit of a dip into your lower back, that's fine. You're holding the chair so your back will be nice and safe. And if you want, you can breathe into there. Just get that opening up even more. We call this our heart space. Just feel that whole area opening up. Often in life, the shoulders can drop themselves forwards. It's a lovely way to stretch those tight muscles out. And slowly and gently release. Good. Right, so now we want to work through the spine in the other direction. So just have the hands on the legs and you're going to take the spine into the chair, tuck the belly, tuck the chin and just round it as much as you feel you want to. So we've moved the spine in the other direction and now this is yeah, opposite. If you're worried about the breath, take the breath into the back, into the back ribs. And then let's slowly just lift ourselves back up so our spine is nice and long again. And hopefully, oh, sorry, my battery's getting low. I'm gonna have to run up and get my cord, sorry. It's my second class is why. Sorry about that. Let's just plug her in. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> that was a schoolgirl error, wasn't it? Okay. All right, so let's interlace the fingers and bring the first finger so it's pointing outwards. And we're going to work through a side bend. So make sure you feel your feet are solid on the floor because we're going to need to use our core and these feet. So on an in-breath, bring the arms up. Then you're going to slide left down your wall. So you're just going to come over to one side. That's your out breath. Use your belly, use your feet and in breath to come back up. And then when you're ready on your out breath, slide down the other side. So I want you to go with your own breath. In and out through the nose if you can. And nice and slow. So you're getting the maximum amount of air into this lung that's being stretched, okay? Every cell in our body needs oxygen. So this really, really helps to take it deep into the body because all the air can get really low into the lungs, which can oxygenate the blood and it can travel around the body for that purpose. And anytime we have the arms above the head, we're stimulating our lymphatic system, which is a system that helps to excrete all the toxins in our body, you know, like the muck. And that's just, it just builds up from daily living. But it doesn't have a system of its own, right? Let's make this other side the last one. It doesn't have a pump this lymphatic system. So we have to move to get it working. That's it. That's your last one. Bring your arms down and give them a break. Give them a shake out if you want. That might be quite nice. Right, let's start working through these hips then. So hands where you wish. You can have them dangle or just have them on your legs. We're going to do our step over. All right. If you want to 
touch your feet to the floor, then do. If you can keep that leg up, then fine. Make sure your core is really helping you. So we're going to start with your right leg and we're going to lift it up and take it out. Okay. And I want it to be like a half circle. I want it to be nice and smooth. So it's a half sort of circle kind of shape. Because this hip bone is a circle. So we need everything to be nice and rounded, nice and circular. All right. Let's get your own pace. So over the weeks, these thighs will strengthen and those hips will be a bit freer. Let's do one more if we can. We're gonna to start to build these up now. A little more, yay. All right, so readjust yourself and we'll do the other side. I think that was about six out of the way. So when you're ready, off we go. Keep the spine nice and long. Try and keep sat upright. Lovely. It's quite tough on that thigh. And it's good. Right, let's do one more. Brilliant. All right, let's release those thighs. Bring the hands into fists up and down the outside of the legs. Large intestine meridian. And then up and down the inside. That's your small intestine. And then just all over the thighs, generally, just to bring them up so they don't feel stiff. Okay, we're going to come back to the arms for a sec and then we'll revisit the legs again. So we did one a moment ago where the hands were quite low down. I want you to move a little bit further forward in your chair if you feel safe to do so. I might go sideways actually for this one. And then the idea is to start lower down <clears throat> and then move yourself forward as you scoop the hands up the chair. So I'm going to come up the chair and move myself forward. I'm going to hold onto the chair. So this will be for your shoulders. OK, you might be able to go up a little bit further. And then as you come forward, you can roll the shoulder blades into each other. I don't know how far you'll get up because it depends on how your shoulders are feeling. Don't let the head drop. Keep the neck in line with your spine. And then bring that breath again into the chest. So you feel as though you're opening that whole space up. Okay, and then bring yourself back up. So you might want to take your hands down the chair or you might just want to use your momentum to, and your strength to bring you back up. Right, so halfway in your chair, sit back. We're going to bring the arms and the legs up. Okay, so we're going to start building a few more in now. So let's go for a few more. I don't know how many yet, we'll just get started. So. <laughs> so we're gonna work with our breath today. So in breath, lift everything up as much as we can. Stay there in your pause and on your out breath, come back down. Okay, so when you're ready, you can push your heels away or your toes entirely up to you. I really don't mind.
lovely. Just bringing strength to the whole body. This is a fantastic move. So again, it gets the energy moving, gets the body detoxing, clearing itself out. Let's do a couple more, I'm sure you can. Mm. Wonderful. So let's lift up from the back of our chair, widen through the feet, forward bend, hands coming down the thighs or just dangling, tuck the chin, forward we go. Hold on to the legs, the chair, or just let the arms dangle. For this one, bring your breath into your back for that expansion in that whole back space. All right, keeping the chin to the chest, in breath, stack your spine, come all the way up. And then bring those legs in. So to work deeper into the hip, we can come into something called a, a pigeon. Move my chair back a bit. So ultimately, what the aim is to bring your leg over your thigh all right so this can be done in lots of ways you can bring your straight leg or your leg on the floor further forward so that you can get the leg there right because i don't know how tight your hip is or you can start off down your leg so you can just sort of let it sit there doesn't matter where you are as long as you feel as though this knee is dropping open that's going to work into your hip all right, so wherever you are on this journey, it doesn't matter. All right, don't forget I do this a lot. Okay, so wherever you are, if you feel that's like enough, you're at your max, then just stay there, breathe in and out of the tight bit. So that might be into that hip, might be in the knee, because you know the knee's in a twist on this one, so you have to be careful. If you want to go any deeper, then obviously you can use your hand and just push down. On that leg and that will open the hip a bit more all right but the idea here is wherever you've got this bent knee to relax that leg and if you can relax the leg that will just give you a bit more freedom through that hip okay and what you want to feel in the breath is though where it's tight you're you're bringing space into it on the in breath and then you're melting the tightness on the out breath or you could use the um, visualization of a balloon. You're blowing up a balloon in that space on the in-breath, and then you're letting it fizzle all down to something squidgy and soft on the out-breath, which is a balloon after it's been blown up, okay? So you choose wherever you wanna be. It's all, it's all relative to your knee and to your, and to your hip, all right? But you wanna feel as though this leg is really soft, the knees dropping out to the side. It's important to keep the hips mobile in that open position as well as it is sort of when we walk. Right, that's enough talking from me. We'll shift to the other side. And bear in mind, this might be different, okay? So this hip for me is tighter. My knee doesn't go out as far. Don't judge it, just it is what it is, all right? I ran for lots of years. I think that's just runner's hip. <laughs> so, you know, and just experiment. It might be a different place altogether, doesn't matter. 
Again, you can use your hand, but you want to feel into where it's tight. Take the breath, soften this leg. Want to get the mind working with that part of the body. All right, let's bring that leg down. Now either having the hands in the lap or you can hold onto your chair. We're gonna come up onto the toes and then we're gonna sort of circle and do whatever we can that involves the toes and the ankles, all right? So you're just gonna sort of work. You might wanna work one at a time. You might wanna work them both at the same time, but just see if you can get them to sort of go into the ankle to go into all sorts of kind of shapes and all sorts of places. Just so you're sort of freeing those up. And when you work with the toes, again, you release some energy through the toes. We often get stuck in shoes and I don't, I don't know that our body, our feet like shoes that much really. I'm quite lucky I can spend my life mostly barefoot, which is fabulous. So just making your own kind of shapes and working in to those feet. That's it. And if you feel a bit stiff, you can always stay there, you know, and sort of feel it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, feel it just work its way out. All right, and then we're going to do the same with the hands, but in a more structured way. So just bring the feet back down to the floor. <clears throat> going to bring the palms together. And then however you want to use your arms, you're going to take the backs of the hands together. So for me, my elbows have to rise up and the fingers sort of have to point towards me and then I come back and then I can go in the other direction. So this one is different again. Okay, and then we're gonna come back. So just work where you can. Great one for the wrists. also works up into the arms as well and the speed is your own <clears throat> all right okay and then just check those thing fingers off let's sit back in our chair And I'm just going to give you your like your tool for the day, if you like, to take away with you. When you feel as though you've got thoughts in your head that won't go, anything that you would rather, you know, not be in your head. We don't only have the thoughts in our head. These thoughts are like outside our head, in like in our we call it our energy field, okay? And we can interrupt those thoughts just by going into this external field if you like so what you can do and as long as it feels all right for your head you can just tap gently all over your head and what you're doing is you're interrupting the thoughts you know if they're good thoughts then obviously you want to keep them but anything less than good and you just start to tap and you're interrupting you're sort of tapping into the neurovascular points all over the head so just even the forehead, the temples, all the way around. So this is something for your toolbox. If you feel a little bit overwhelmed and the blimmin' thoughts keep going around in your head and they won't go away. Tap around your head as long as you haven't got a headache. In fact, you could test it on a headache. That might even make the headache go away. Because often that's caused by tension, isn't it? Too much thought. Lovely, okay. So 
I like to close the class in the same way. So bring the palms together at your heart. <clears throat> Namaste. And open your eyes when you're ready. <clears throat>